And we are back for a fourth and final part, and this is the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We are reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, TLV, the Tree of Life version. Um, and this week we have completed the book of John introduction and chapters 1 through 10. Next week we are going to complete um, the book of John, uh, reading through chapters 11 to 21. And then from there we'll be going into the book of Acts. This is the altar call and we were talking so much about Yeshua and his teaching, his ministry, the reason why he came and absolutely Yeshua his name means salvation. Salvation can only be achieved through Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the Anointed One. He is the Savior. He is the Lamb who came and sacrificed himself to take away the sins of the world. He took everything with him. And he laid his own life down willingly because he loved us, willingly on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin through his shed blood, through his death, we could be redeemed and reconciled to the Father. He did not stay dead. He was buried, yes, uh, but he rose again and he is alive and sitting at the right hand of the Father now, and he will be coming a second time to rule and reign. This will be the millennial reign. He will be ruling and reigning because he is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He has defeated the devil. Now, the world will tell you there's many paths to get to heaven, many paths to, to get to the Father, and that's not true. You must be born again. We just read that in our teaching today, the teaching of a Pharisee known as Nicodemus who came to Yeshua and Yeshua taught him about the concept of being born again. And every single one of us must be born again from above. We are born in the flesh, but that doesn't cut it. Flesh cannot enter the kingdom of heaven and it won't. So flesh is of flesh, spirit is of spirit. We must be born again. How to be born again is to come to Yeshua, confess your sins. He will forgive you. And as he told the woman that, was, that had been committing adultery, he forgave her, but he said, go and sin no more. You get your slate wiped clean, but that doesn't mean you go right out and do the same things or, or continue to sin. Um, you get sealed with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and helps to guide you in your life after you are born again so that you walk in the ways and you walk in the statutes of, of the Lord and you have a relationship with them. God doesn't care about religion. He doesn't care what denomination you are. That's just another division and we need to stop divisions. God doesn't see color. God does not see if you're, you know, if you're purple, green, black, white, whatever. He doesn't see that. We are all creations of a loving God. You beget, you become a family of God when you are born again. And once you are part of that family of God, all of that should, there should not be divisions. There's not going to be divisions in eternity. They will come from all nations to be with God in eternity. So it doesn't matter if you are Presbyterian, Methodist, Pentecostal, if you are Lutheran, Reformed, Catholic. It doesn't matter. He doesn't care about your religion. What he cares about is a relationship with you. And he cares about what's in your heart. And if you're born again, you don't think this way. This is how the world thinks. And I'm telling you, the world needs Yeshua. The world needs Jesus. If the world would get saved, they wouldn't have divisions. They wouldn't have hatred towards one another. Because that is not what Yeshua is all about. That is not what being born again is all about. If you're part of one big 
family of God, you have no divisions. You're part, you're part of that family. You're a brother and, and sister to somebody in another nation who has accepted the Lord as your savior. That is your sister. That is your brother. So how can you divide? You are also part of the body of Messiah. And Yeshua is our head. We're the body. If you start attacking the body, well, the body, how, how, how does one attack one's body? Think about that. So if people would, would stop with the world's evil and wickedness and come and get saved, really get saved and born again, you will cut out all the divisions. There will be none of this nonsense that's going on in the world today. But too many people have one foot yet in the world. They can't let go of what's in the world. And this is where they get tripped up. And the devil likes to like spin his web at you and weave you up into that spider's web. So be careful what you listen to, who you listen to, bring it back to the book of God. That's where you'll find the only truth there is. The truth lies in that book. The truth lies with Yeshua because he, he is grace and truth. The world will lie to you, but a lot of people like to have their ears tickled. And so they like to listen to lies and fables. And, you know, that's very sad because you're going to get tripped up. We are not to mix and mingle with the ways of the world. No, we don't coexist with this, this and that and this and that. We are to stay steadfast. We are to be a peculiar people, God's people. And we listen to God and God alone, not the ways of the world. Our king is Yeshua. He's the only king worthy to be called king. The only ruler to be worthy of that title. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single person has. And every single person needs the Messiah to absolve them of that sin. You can't get there by works. You can't get there by your money. Money's not going to buy your way into heaven. So if you think you're, you, you have all the money in the world and you have all the power in the world that is going to buy your way into heaven, you think wrong. There is a story about Lazarus and the rich man, the rich man that didn't care about Lazarus. And Lazarus died, and so did the rich man eventually. The rich man was in hell, Sheol, and it was hot there. And there was a chasm between Lazarus and the rich man, and he's pleading out. He's pleading out to Abraham. He saw Abraham, and Abraham said, I can't get to you because there's a chasm between me and you, and I can't get there. And then, then this rich man was pleading, go to my brother so that they may not end up here. So I'm just paraphrasing that. Um, so, yeah. There is a heaven. Yes, there is a hell. And there is many religions out there that will, will say there's no devil, there's no hell. That's not true. Yeshua spoke a lot more about hell. Warning people. You know, so yes, it does exist. He spoke of hell as Sheol, Gehenna. And that is all the meanings of hell. Let's just say, so it does exist. Romans chapter five, verse eight says, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. We know that Yeshua did that willingly because he loved us. We were created in God's image. Hell was not made for humanity. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of humankind there, but hell was created for the devil and his minions. But there are even many who worship the devil himself, a defeated foe. He's no winner. He's already lost. He has confused you. He has caused chaos. He has led 
yeah, in a wrong way. And I pray for those that are very, so very much lost in that because you are lost. If you are walking in this world without being born again and saved and without Yeshua, you are lost. But you can be found. Before you take your last breath, you can accept Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. You can change your ways. You can repent and turn back to God, your creator. And he can become your Abba Father. But once you take your last breath, and you have not chosen correctly or wisely. And it is true. Choose this day whom you will serve. It will affect your eternity, your eternal life, and where you will spend it. And if you think that you've got it made in this world and you love your sin, this world is but a minuscule of time in comparison to eternity. I challenge you to look up the meaning of the word eternity because that is where our existence is going to be most spent. When we leave this world, our spirit doesn't doesn't go, doesn't die, it continues. And it's going to continue in a good place or in hell, being tormented day in and day out without rest. Choose this day whom you will serve. Don't let the world lie to you. Not everybody's going to heaven. There are even some religions that say we are all children of God. No, we're not. You become part of the family of God when you were born again. When you are born from above, you are a creation of God, just like everything is a creation of God, down to a blade of grass. And not everyone is going to heaven. Yeshua himself says that. There will be those that will stand in front of him in judgment, saying, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in, in your name? Did I not cast out demons in your name? Lord, Lord, did I do this? Did I do that in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't even know who you are. Imagine. We don't want to hear those words. We want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's rest. That's what we want to hear. So be careful who you listen to. You know, Yeshua warned us um, in the Bible. The disciples warned us that there are wolves in sheep's clothing out there. There are false teachers. There are false preachers. There are false prophets. There's false doctrines. We have to be careful who we listen to. We have to be careful that the doctrine is sound and biblical. Be careful who you listen to. If, you, if they're intermingling the world and the world's ways, they're leading you down the broad path that leads to destruction, the path that leads to the Lord, that leads to God, that leads to eternal life is very narrow. Very narrow. And it's Yeshua. Yeshua says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father except through me period there's no other ways you can't rationalize your way and no your family can't pay your way once you're gone so choose this day whom you will serve don't sit on the fence i don't know why anybody would wait looking at the state that our world is in now if you think the world is bad now uh buckle up as the closer we get to the time of Yeshua's return, and we don't know the day or the hour, but we have been in the end days since he left this planet, since he ascended to be with the Father. He went to prepare a place for us. He sent the Comforter, the Ruach HaKadosh, that has all been completed, and we have been in the end times. We don't know. We could be on that very last minutes. But remember, one day is like a thousand to the Lord. So we don't know the day or the hour. We can only look at the signs and the seasons and we need to be aware. We can see the wickedness increasing. No, we're not exactly in the days of Noah. If you look at what was going on in Noah's time, we're getting close. I'd say we're in the days of Lot for sure. I mean, that is increasing ever so much. And we know the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
though, I say we're pretty much there. Um, that That is for certain. Um, but we need to stick fast to Yeshua, and he will stay close to us. He promised us he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. If you have never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, and you want to do this now, I encourage you to say this prayer with me that I am going to say in just a moment. I just want to give you another Bible passage to reflect on, and you can go to this in in a Bible if you have a Bible, Um, and we'll talk about that after we do this prayer about about the Word of God. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, it reads, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only way so that no one can boast, no one can be in heaven saying, well, I got here because I did this many deeds. You only did that many deeds. How did you get here? No, there's going to be none of that. We are all on equal level playing field. We all need a Messiah. We all need the Savior in order to be born again, to be saved, to get to heaven. It is only, only, only through Yeshua. And if anybody tells you anything differently, they're lying to you. And don't listen. Run from them because it's, it's, it's a lie. Yeshua is the only way. So if you are ready to accept Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this prayer with me now. God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner. And I'm really sorry. And I know and I understand that I can't, I can't forgive myself. I need a Messiah. I need the Savior. I need Yeshua. I need Jesus. I understand he came here for the very purpose to redeem me from my sins. I believe and I understand this now more than I've ever understood in my life that Yeshua is the Savior. Yeshua is the Messiah who took away the sins of the world when he laid his life on a cross for the world, for me and the world. I believe Yeshua died on a cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again and ascended to you, the Father. I believe he's alive, and I believe he is coming again, and I believe his coming is very soon. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to find myself in hell. I want to be with you, God. I want to be with you, Yeshua. I want to become a member of the family of God. Please forgive me of my sins. I want to change my life, and I'm asking you to help me to do that. I believe and I declare you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I believe that you will rule and reign forever. I accept your gift, the gift of salvation that I could never earn on my own. and I. Accept that eternal life. I declare you Lord of my life and from this day forward to rule and reign in my heart forever. Please, please send your Holy Spirit to reside inside of me, to live inside of me, to guide me in all of your ways, to lead me, to teach me and direct me for the rest of my life. And I thank you, Yeshua. I thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done. That you loved me that much to give your life for me and for the rest of the world. And in, in accepting you as my Lord and Savior, I believe also through you and you alone, Yeshua, Jesus, that I am saved. I am healed by the stripes you took. I am healed. I am delivered. I am born again into the family of God. I'm a child of God and I am set free from sin and its consequences. Thank you. Thank you. Because I do understand the wages of sin or death. And I thank you for saving me and sparing me from that. I believe through you and you alone I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, precious, mighty, powerful, and awesome name. Amen and amen. And if you have said this prayer with me, 
Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. You are now a new creature in Yeshua, in Jesus. You are born again. Born again of the Spirit. Washed by His blood. Cleansed by His blood. I would encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation. One that teaches directly from the Bible. Not bringing in false doctrine or man-made doctrine or anything else but one that sticks to the word of God. How do you know? How do you know that whatever ministry you're sitting under is sticking to the word of God? Get a copy of the Bible yourself. Get a copy of the Bible yourself and start reading it. Make a commitment to get to know your father's heart that is in the word of God. Getting to know Yeshua. Yeshua is throughout that Bible. Old Testament and New. There are types and shadows that you will see in the New Testament, um, but you'll see the types and shadows in the Old Testament that reflect on Yeshua. But go to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. You can see there's multiple versions of the Bible. I would take a verse of the Bible um, and just Check out all the versions and how they read. I'm not going to tell you you have to get this version of the Bible or that version of the Bible. I'm going to tell you there's very good sound versions of the Bible. Yes, the King James Version of the Bible is very sound. Is it easy for everyone to understand? No. And that's okay. Um, no, we don't speak in Old English style language, so it can be very difficult for some people. That doesn't mean that the English Standard Version is any less of a version. It's a very sound version, um, as well as the NASB. We use, um, in, in this Bible study, we're using the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life Version, the TLV, very sound version. There's also the New King James Version that, that uses the language that we use today. So you can even go to the New King James Version, and that's okay. There are... 21st century Bibles, though, that I'm going to tell you to stay away from. And I, I'm i not sure what the names. There's two Bibles. Uh, I'm not sure of the of, of the actual versions of the Bible, but I know that um, there has been some tampering in the 21st century with the Bible. They have taken out the name of Israel, which and, and, and have also taken out the name of Jesus about 80 to 90 times in one version of the Bible. Um, so I'm just telling you, stay away from the 21st century Bibles until I find out what those versions are. Um, actually, uh, it's probably better to be safe than sorry. There's plenty of good sound versions of the Bible. And the word of God is the same yesterday. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just because people want to live in sin does not give them the right to change God's word. God's not changing. Not at all. So, I mean, man will change, but, you know, too bad. God's not. So you can't, you know, and you're not going to force God's hands. God is not going to stand for this at all. There's another version of the Bible to stay clear from, and that is the Queen James Version of the Bible. Of course, they have definitely tampered with, with the Bible there. Um, those Bibles that have been tampered with God's word are not blessed of God. They are not even divinely inspired of God. So I would just stay clear of them. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there is a commandment of God that says not to tamper with his word and that he reserves the right to consequences if you do. Uh, number one, if you add to the word of God, he can add the plagues that are written within, within and throughout the Bible onto you. And if you subtract from the word of God, he can subtract your name from the book of life. So I don't know that anybody in their right mind would want to be messing with the word of God just because they want to cherry pick and they want to tickle their own ears and tickle the ears of those that they're, they're trying to influence. That is the work of the devil who is the father of lies. It's not the work of God and it's not blessed of God. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, but there are very sound versions of the Bible. I'm going to encourage you to also develop a prayer life, get into a you know, a small group that can help you to grow in the faith as well. 
as long as they're, they're teaching soundly from the Bible, um, yes, you want to do that. We are part of the body of Messiah. We are part, uh, we are part of the family of God. And, and in being part of a family of God, part of the body of Messiah, we need to interact with one another. We need to build each other up. We need to encourage one another with the word of God, the true word of God. And we need a fellowship. We need to, we learn from one another. As the Ruach HaKadosh moves through us, we share with one another through, through the Lord. So that's all I'm going to say um, on all of these things. Um, and I thank you and I welcome anyone who has come to the family of God now. You are now my brother or sister in Yeshua in Jesus, and it's wonderful. So I'm going to end this teaching now with a benediction. It's also known as the Aaronic benediction, the Aaronic blessing, the priestly blessing, found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27, when Adonai spoke to Moses, um, instructing him to tell Aaron and his sons that he wanted to have Benaiah Israel, the children of Israel, gathered because he wanted to place his name on them and he wanted to bless them. As part of the family of God, you're a child of God now. And he loves to bless his children. He loves to interact with his children. He wants to hear your voice. And he loves when we sing praise and worship to him, when, he, when we talk to him, when we pray to him. Absolutely. And he loves to, to bless you. He loves to give you his blessing. Habraka, the blessing. In Hebrew, it goes like this. Ivarekaka Adonai ve'ishmareka ya'er Adonai panavaleka ve'kuneka isa Adonai panavaleka ve'asemleka shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, his peace, shalom. Amen and amen. And it's still early enough in the week to say Shavuotov. Have a good week. God bless each and every one of you.